Hello and welcome to Moonstone Makes. My name is Tommy. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Thank you for being here today. It is a bright, sunny, and cold Sunday in February here on the Northern California coast where I'm coming to you from. There are show notes in the description box below if you're interested in checking out anything I talk about in today's episode. This is Squirrel Cat. She's a cat. Thank you for being here today. I appreciate you watching. In this week's video, I've got a little bit of knitting, just like a little bit. And uh, I'll talk a teeny bit about some other things I've been interested in lately. And I've got a little bit of admin. I've got a giveaway winner to announce. So I do quarterly prize drawings for my patrons and anybody else who contributes to the podcast. Uh, I am on Patreon. There's a link below. I'm also on Ko-Fi and I have YouTube memberships available. So if you contribute via any of those means, you are automatically entered into a quarterly drawing where uh, I probably I'm going to be knitting something for you, but possibly sometimes I give away yarn as well. So this time it was for the fourth quarter of last year, but since this is my first video of this year, I kind of, it's about a month late, <laughs> but I wanted to wait for a video to announce the winner. So for the fourth quarter of 2021, uh, the winner is going to be getting a hat that I knit that you may have seen on a previous episode. And it is the Moss and Deerhorns hat by Sylvia McFadden. It's got this really cool lace and cable pattern up one side, and the rest of it is just stockinette with a one by one brim at the bottom. It's really nice. It's an Aran weight pattern. I like it a lot. I knit this using this yarn. This is the leftover. It's some hand spun that I spun up on my Ladybug spinning wheel, and it's wool that was milled at my local-ish mill called Mendocino Fiber Co. And uh, I think I started with three ounces possibly, something like that. But this is the leftover. It's about an Aran weight and you'll get the hat. You'll also get a project bag that was handmade and donated to the podcast by Debbie. So thank you, Debbie. This is the bag that the winner will be getting. It's a drawstring bag. It's really big and it's got sheep all over it. <laughs> so the winner of this stuff is Sarah from New York. Sarah, you are a patron and congratulations. I'm really, really excited to be sending this to you. I probably already have your address, maybe, but I am going to message you over on Patreon uh, to let you know that you won and also get your address if I don't have it. So, Hopefully I'll be sending that out to you soon. Congratulations. Thank you so much to everybody who contributes on uh, one of those platforms. It really means a lot and I appreciate it so, so much. If you're interested in checking that out, there will be another giveaway for this first quarter of 2022. So links below. Yo. Okay. Let's get into what I've been making. It's not that much. I do have an FO. Uh, I finished my Feederbrook farm socks. So I was working on these on the last episode and I finished them quite a long time ago and here they are. So I really, really like them. This is the first one. This is the second one. And this yarn is a DK weight. It's a marled yarn. It's the kind of yarn that's dyed in the wool and then spun after it's dyed. So it has this marled, almost hand spun effect, which I really, really like. And they're both different because of the nature of that kind of yarn. And I love them. So they were DK weight. I think I knit them on a size two. I forget now because it's been so long, but I'll correct myself if I'm wrong. I'm sure I have a project page. I'm sure I have a project page where I wrote down the notes, <laughs> but I think a two, maybe a three. I think it was a three. I knit these on a size US three. Pretty sure that's right. Um, I did cuff down and I did, I don't remember anything about these socks. I'm just realizing. <laughs> um, the numbers. I cast on, I don't know what I cast on. I have no idea, but they're top down. It's got a one by one rib. I cast on a certain number of stitches and then decreased down a little bit, I think. Like I want to say I kind of remember, but I know I don't. I know I'm just going to say it wrong, but it's, prob it's probably on my project page. I should just look. I'm going to look. 
Boom. Look at me all organized and shit. Okay, so I cast on 52 stitches. I did the one by one rib ribbing and then somewhere in here I decreased slowly down to 44 stitches and then that's it. That's what I did. I did a heel flap and gusset and a wedge toe. And that is the story of my Feeder Brook Farm Socks. I got this yarn at my local yarn shop called Yarn in Eureka, California. And I really like them. I made them extra long like I like to do. The thing that I like to do with socks is make them extra long. They kind of usually come up um, not quite knee high, but like a little bit less than knee high. And I cast on like a bigger number and then decrease down to the smaller circumference below my calf and then go from there. And that's really by far been my favorite sock formula. The socks that I've made like that are my most favorite socks. So these have been great. I have been wearing them. Like I said, they've been done for quite a while, maybe like at least a month. So they're currently some of my favorite hand knit socks that I like to wear. I love that they're thick. I really like that they're DK weight. And I also really love that they're non super wash. Um, they're hundred percent wool. I'm not someone who cares that much about non super wash and no nylon in my socks. I, I don't go anywhere anymore. <laughs> Uh, so I don't typically wear my hand knit socks for one in shoes in general because I'm mostly just at home so they're kind of like all my hand knit, all my socks are house socks because I'm at home all the time and when I do go out and I wear shoes it's usually light stuff like I'm not like that hard wearing on my socks in shoes and if I am doing something that I I like if I'm hiking or something, I'm not wearing hand-knit socks. If I'm going on a really long walk, I'm not wearing hand-knit socks. Um, you know, I'll do like yard work and stuff in hand-knit socks, but I've, you know, I don't care. It's fine. I've never had too much of a problem, but like I said, I'm not that harsh on my socks. And I just really, really love the feel of thicker weight, non-superwash socks. They're my favorites. And the tall ones, too. Okay, so that's this project. Very excited about those. I have not cast on a new pair of socks. <sighs> I should. I want to. Yeah. I'm into the thicker weight socks right now, though. Which is good. It's just that there's like this... I have a very small stash of sock yarn, and I want to use it, but I kind of don't want socks knit out of sock yarn right now. I don't know. It's... 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 It's, it's fine. It's a fine problem to have. <laughs> my next project is a work in progress. And it is my only work in progress. It is the only project that I have been working on for months and months. And it is a sweater. It's the Be Thankful Cardigan by Lily Kate France. And I'm so close to being done. I'm like really, really almost done. So here's what I have so far. Oh my, you cannot even see it. <laughs> That's it. Okay, so this is a cardigan. It's um, a bottom up set and sleeve cardigan. And it's like a v-neck and there's buttons up it. It's meant to be kind of cropped, but kind of just like mid waist kind of cropped, not like super cropped, but like just kind of regular cropped. And, um, I, it's bottom up if I didn't say that. I really decided to, I'm pretty much, I'm knitting this for Maria's make along. Uh, Maria of Wool and Forest Knits, she did a knit along for this sweater and it's like way over now. <laughs> but when she announced that knit along, I really, uh, it pushed me into really wanting to cast it on. I've been wanting to make this sweater for a little while in this yarn, which by the way is Barocco Mochi. And I've seen quite a few people make this sweater in this yarn, including Maria. She made the sweater in this yarn in the black and I really, really like it. I chose uh, Aubergine, I think it's called. It's the purple and it's very dark as you can see or not see. <laughs> Depending on how you look at it. Uh, yeah, it's dark purple. Uh, so Barocco Mochi is this kind of yarn. I don't even know what it's classified as. Uh, I think the pattern calls for a worsted weight yarn. And I... 
I want to say I got gauge, but now I want to say I didn't swatch. I think I didn't swatch. <laughs> I think I swatched. But it's like a worsted. Maybe it's considered an errant. I don't really know. But it's got a nylon tube as the base of the strand. And then it's got its fiber blown through it. It's that kind of yarn. And it is 37% baby alpaca, 35% nylon, 26% fine merino wool and 2% other fiber. So, and it's, it's considered a four on like the little yarn rating weight scale, but I don't know what that means in like words. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, um, it's really nice yarn. I like it a whole lot. It's very light, it's very airy. And I like the color. It's kind of like, it's just a, it's, it's very, plummy. It's like aubergine's a great descriptor for it. And it's got little like pops or flecks of like these other kinds of colors running through it. A lot of them are blue or yellow or orange or red. And it's really cool. So it's kind of like a teeny bit tweety. And I originally bought like four skeins for it, I think. I had to buy a fifth skein and because I ran out of yarn, because I lengthened it. So let me see if there's a way I can make you see this better. I feel like you were like just getting a blob. But I lengthened it a lot. I don't do crop sweaters. I've tried over and over again and they keep not working. So I didn't do it. I like my sweaters to come down past my butt, like right past my butt. That's my favorite length for tops, sweaters. I'm a tunic wearer. I like things kind of long. So like long in terms of shirts, but short, short in terms of dresses. That's my preferred length of things. So I lengthened it and that meant I had to modify it a lot. There's a lot of different parts to this pattern that I had to figure out and change because I wanted to change the length. I ended up knitting, I've probably overall knit this sweater twice because I did a lot of ripping out and re-knitting everywhere just all over the place the body the sleeves the everything got ripped out and re-knit like at some point but i'm happy with how it is now i'm gonna move you a little farther away so that maybe i can show you a little bit better okay so here's how long it is um yeah, the original pattern has shaping to where like you cast on on the bottom and you just increase out and then split for the armholes. But since I lengthened it a lot, I needed to do more traditional waist shaping because I wanted waist shaping in there still. I didn't want it to just, just be straight. So I just made up some more traditional waist shaping where I started at a number and then kind of went in a little bit and then out a little bit. That didn't work the first time I did it, which was the first time I had to rip out. I did my decrease and increase rates too rapidly and it just ended up being like really weird and wonky. So I ripped it up the whole body out and I re-knit it at a slower uh, waist shaping rate. <laughs> like you can see it. <laughs> um, and then I also omitted, there's supposed to be up the side, like where, where you would think a side seam was supposed to be. There's supposed to be a little bit of detail, like a little bit of a slip stitch pearl detail. The second time around, I completely omitted it because the first time around I did it, but you couldn't see it and it was just easier to not do it and I didn't care. So I didn't do it the second time around. Um, I also changed the ribbing. You are supposed to do some, like, I don't know, some different ribbing with like different numbers of knits to pearls, but I ended up just doing a two by two ribbing for the bottom hem because I just don't mess with that. I don't know. I don't know. Details like that don't, hold on. Details like that uh, are more annoying to me than it's worth. And I, I just like basic ribbing, I think better anyway than like cute fancy ribbings. So I changed that. So I said before that it was a set and sleeve cardigan. That was wrong. It is not, is it a, it is a drop sleeved cardigan. So here's the drop sleeve. You knit up here, do a three needle bind off here backwards so that you can kind of see the little seam. And this stitch marker here is holding a drop stitch that I uh, dropped when I was doing the three needle bind off. So I'll have to fix that at some point. And then here's the sleeve. Uh, it's a very wide sleeve. 
and I also changed that. So I did the sleeve as you were supposed to, but I kind of wish I would have picked up a little less stitches to make the sleeve not so big. Uh, but I didn't, and I decided it wasn't worth it to me to rip back like an entire sleeve to make it a little teeny bit skinnier. Um, but I did change the bottom of the sleeve. So here's the bottom of the sleeve as it is now. The pattern calls for some weird sleeve shaping at the bottom. You're supposed to do it straight and then do a bunch of rapid decreases at the end, but in a really weird way. And I did it, and I did not like how it looked, like at all. So I ripped it back and I just made up my own way to do it. Um, I've never done like a balloon sleeve like this before, but I think it turned out really well. I like how it looks. Um, and what I ended up doing is I just knit for a while and then I did one round of knit two, knit two together, and then another round of knit one, knit two together, and then I started my ribbing. Um, so, and then I did a one by one ribbing for the cuff for like maybe an inch and a half. And, that's pretty much it. I have picked up for the button band and I'm almost done with it. I've done the buttonholes, which I also changed from the pattern. The pattern calls for a certain kind of buttonhole and I tried it and I didn't really like it. So I just ripped back a little bit and did like the kind of buttonhole where you do yarn over and knit two together and it just makes a yarn over hole. That one felt a little more right to me. So that's what I did. And I have gotten it, I have got it on a longer cable. Um, when I, because I wanted to be able to show you like fully and maybe try it on for you. And I, when I do that, when I want to try something on, the way that I like to do it, because I have this option, is to do this cable connector. So I'm, I'm shimmying it out of here. What I have here is two interchangeable cables put together with a cable connector. So this long metal piece is a connector. And so I have the whole sweater um, on the two longest cables that I have. That way I can stretch it out as far as I need to and not worry about any stitches coming off. And when I try on a sweater and I have it on like, you know, the hem or the body, that's how I like to do it too. Uh, it's a really good way to try sweaters on as you're making them. So let's put this thing on. Oh, another thing that the pattern has you do, which I think is really cool that I've never done before, is it has you, I also had to alter the way that I did the button band in itself because I lengthened it, so the instructions didn't make sense for mine. So I just kind of winged it, and it seems to be working out good so far. But I did take from the pattern uh, this like neck shaping thing where you do a little bit of, you do a few decreases just on the button band, like right, I think like right here, at least that's where I'm doing it because I think that's where you're supposed to do it. And I thought that was a really cool idea. So this is kind of what it's like on. It's got these really baggy sleeves that kind of cinch in at the wrist, which I know is like a thing, it's common. Like it's really common in hand knitted sweaters and I've just never really done it before and I love it. I love it, I'm so into it. And it's kind of, it's not oversized, but it's not like super tight. And I really like it. So that's kind of it. And the length is like right there. And I'm into it. I love the color. I love the color. I love the yarn. It's very light. It's so lightweight and airy and I just think this is gonna be really nice to wear. I really regret that it's been taking me so long to make this thing because I just wanna wear it. I really like these shoulder details. This is the reverse three needle bind off down the shoulder. I like that a lot. So, ta-da, it's almost done. I seriously have like, I think I have one more row on the button band and then I'm gonna bind off and then I'm done. And then I just have to put buttons on it, which we'll see if that happens. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm super close to being done with this and I can taste it, I cannot wait. I really hope this all this movement isn't too disorienting, sorry if it is, but that's it for what I've been working on. Like that is over the past couple months. I finished a pair of socks and I'm still not done with one sweater. <laughs> My um, knitting mojo has really dropped off. It has been replaced by some other mojos 
which happens to me quite often. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you may have noticed that my knitting mojo goes through highs and lows all year long. Um, and maybe in a couple months, I will knit like 17 things in a month. <laughs> and then in another couple months, I'll knit one thing over two months. My, um, my interest, my hobbies just like go all over the place. And I get really obsessed with a hobby when I get into it. So I do have one future, two future knitting plans though that I'm gonna tell you about. So I bought most of the yarn for my Be Thankful cardigan at my local yarn shop. But when I needed my final skein, they were out of it. So I went to Webs and they have it there. And I got my extra skein that I needed plus one other skein of yarn. I got a text a little while ago from a friend of mine who uh, I had knit a beanie for quite a few years ago and uh, the text said it was the text said that he had lost it and uh, he was uh, horrified that he had lost it and he was asking for another one so uh, this is somebody who I knit him I've knit him this hat a long time ago out of some Cascade 220 superwash in like a dark gray charcoal. It was the Earthen Hat by Alicia Plummer and he loved it and literally I'm pretty sure he wore it every single day for like five years. Like I'm not even exaggerating. <laughs> and he lost it. He sent me this like long text explaining how he lost it and how devastated he was. And so I, of course I'm gonna knit him another one. And I asked him like if there was anything he wanted that he would change about it or want it different or anything like that because I wasn't sure if I wanted just to knit him the same exact thing all over again or something else because like this was like a staple in this man's wardrobe. So um, we pretty much decided that I was just going to knit him the same one, same exact one over again. Uh, I got the same yarn that I used before which is Cascade 220 and I got this from Webs and this is the, is it going to tell me the colorway? Nope, it's color 4002. It's the like charcoal gray one. I don't know if there's like a true black, but it's the Heather's line. So it's like a very dark gray, almost black. It's pretty much black. It's pretty much black. And the only difference is I'm doing his new hat in non superwash. The first time I did 220 superwash, and uh, I prefer knitting with non superwash yarn, so I asked him if he had ever washed his original hat and how he washed it, and he said he was too scared, so he never actually washed it. So I was like, that's perfect. I'm just going to do the next one in non superwash yarn. So I got this for that hat, and I'm going to knit the same exact hat in the same exact way, and it's the, um, it's the Earthen Hat by Alicia Plummer. Uh, I actually am going to alter it a teeny, teeny bit. The first hat, it always bugged me about it. It never seemed to bug him, but he would wear it kind of like a watch cap. So like really close fitting and then flipped up, the brim flipped up. And in the back, the brim, when it would flip up, you could see a little bit of the patterning. So the hat has uh, ribbing and then it has like a knit pearl pattern for the rest of it. And there should have just been like two centimeters more ribbing and less hat pattern pretty much. So that's what I'm going to do this time. But that is a future plan. As soon as this is off the needles, this is going on the needles. I'm actually really sad that I haven't made it for him yet, but I really wanted to get this sweater done. So as soon as this is done, this is going on the needles. And somebody else in my life who really desperately needs a hat is River. He's my eight month old baby and he... He has one hat and it was a gift. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go get it. Okay, so his one hat that he has is this, and this is a beanie knit by Nina of the This Old Knit Podcast. She, Nina is awesome. She has two kids who are older than my two kids, but she has, like me, she has an older girl and a younger boy. And so periodically she sends me some of their hand-me-downs and it's the most amazing thing and I'm like choking up thinking about it. It's so cool. I just love that she does this. And this is one of the hats that I'm assuming she knit for her kids, but she sent it to me. And uh, he's been wearing this hat and this hat is great. I love this hat, but he's even starting to grow out of it a little bit. So he needs another hand knit hat that he can fit in a little better. And the first hat that I knit him that he grew out of a while ago was Noah's hiking hat by, 
Paula Leem. And I knit that out of some hand spun. And it was great. I loved that hat. I freaking loved that hat. It was my favorite baby hat in the entire world. And he grew out of it. And I had this one, so I didn't knit him another one. But now that he's growing out of this one, it's time. So that's going to be on my needles really soon too. I don't know what yarn I'm going to use yet, but I will look in my stash and I will find something. The pattern calls for worsted weight yarn. I really liked the hand spun that I used last time. And so if I have any like hand spun that I think could work for it, I would like to use that, but we'll see. I'm not sure. Um, I have a pretty, I have a pretty small stash and I'm growing more and more uh, discontent with it. Is that the right wording? I kind of want to get rid of all my yarn. I don't like having a stash anymore. It's bothering me. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to use something for my stash so I can slowly get rid of it. But that's going to be the other next thing on my needles. So I've got those two things coming up and hopefully at some point I'll have some more socks on my needles because I like, I like them. And that's it. That's all my crafting stuff. I do have a uh, something that I got sent in the mail and I'm going to tell you about it and give you uh, the discount code that they have given me for you to use if you decide you want to buy it. So I was sent um, this magazine. It's the first issue of Twisting Tales magazine. So they sent me this magazine all the way from the Netherlands. Thank you. And uh, I've been looking through it and reading the articles and it's really, really great. There's a lot of really good stuff in here. There are articles about spinning wool uh, weaving. My favorite article in here is about dyeing buttons. They uh, do some experiments dyeing buttons in different materials. So there's plastic buttons and like wooden buttons and stuff that they dye and it's really, really cool. They talk about different types of dyeing, natural dyeing and snow dyeing. And they also talk about fractal spinning, which I'm really interested in. I really, really like fractal spinning. Um, I don't do it that technically, but there's a really good article in here about the technical part of it, and it's really cool. So it's a really nice big magazine. It's got a really nice matte cover, and here is a little bit of the inside. I think this is the article about fractal spinning. There's a little bit of sewing in here too, a article about sewing with your weaving fabric, which is cool, your woven fabric. I don't know weaving terms. Here is a little bit of an article about button dyeing. So this is a really cool magazine. This is the first issue. It's uh, published in the Netherlands. Uh, I'm really excited to have been sent it. Uh, and there is a coupon code if you're interested in it. I'll put the link to their website below. And the coupon code is... Tommy 10 for 10% off your order. So go check that, that out if you're interested. Thank you again to the ladies that sent me this magazine. I really appreciate it. And that is my magazine review. Now the last thing for favorites is I thought I would just kind of like mention the other things that have been in my world lately because they've been kind of taking over. Uh, and they are Journaling, planning, which sounds weird for in itself to be a hobby, but it totally is. Well, kind of. It's just like kind of there. And reading. So um, I love reading. I've always loved reading. But reading also goes in ups and downs for me. Like, for example, last year, I think I, think I read somewhere between like 8 and 12 books the whole year. Um, and a, a lot of those, like maybe four or five of them were like really small novellas in a series of novellas. So I didn't read that much last year. And this year, I think I've read six books and it's early February. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of reading lately and I really love it. I'm just, oh, I'm so, I'm so happy to get back into reading. I just love, I love books. I love stories. I'm very excited to be back into reading. Um, if you want to find out what I've been reading, you can check me out on Goodreads. I'm Dynamite Trujillo there. I'll leave a link below. And I don't like do reviews or anything, but I do like to keep track of everything that I have read and I'm currently reading, and I do give it like a star review. I also would really like to do a video about the books that I've been reading, just kind of like short my thoughts on all the books I've read so far this year. 
So if I can manage the time to make that happen, I really want to make that happen pretty soon before it gets too deep into the year and I build up too many books because that's happening. Like I'm reading a book in like two days. Like I know that's like, like a thing, like people do that. That's not like that crazy, but it's kind of crazy to me. <laughs> But um, yeah, I've been pretty into it. And I'm trying to juggle knitting and reading. That's always a challenge for me, but I'm getting better at it. I'm getting better at it. Um, also, yeah, I if you've watched my Vlogmas videos, you'll know that I, during December, got this planner, which is the Hobonichi Weeks. And it's my 2022 planner, and I love it still. I love it so much. I'm so into it. Um, and I'm not going to go too much into it now, but, uh, yeah, I'm doing really fun things with it. I feel like I'm very much enjoying it. Uh, I think I want to do another video about kind of going, they call it, I'm also getting, so all the new hobbies I have, I'm also getting into the YouTube world of those hobbies. They call it a flip through. <laughs> when you flip through your like journal or your planner or whatever. So I think I might do a little bit of a video on how I used my Hobonichi weeks and do a little bit of a flip through and kind of show you what I've got in here. Um, I'm really enjoying it. And then um, journaling. I bought a journal and I'm getting into journaling. Journaling is something I've never been into before. Not a single ever in my entire life. Uh, and I never really thought much about it because I'm not, I'm not a writer, like in some kind of fantasy world because I love books and stories so much. Yeah, sure. I'm kind of a writer, but not in any kind of real reality. I've maybe written three short stories in my life and they're bad and I don't have them anymore. <laughs> but, um, so like, and the whole like diary thing has never appealed to me, but stationery and journals have always appealed to me. I am a list maker. I like to draw, even though I'm not good at it. Uh, and so, I don't know, something about going down this rabbit hole led me to this rabbit hole. And I decided to buy a journal and I got one from Notebook Therapy. And it looks like that. It's really cute. It's a dot grid notebook. And I've been having a lot of fun with it. So I've been using it in different ways. I have been using it kind of kind of like a diary but not like I don't know like I've been trying to do the thing like maybe if I just write like random stuff over like every single day I'll like actually become good and like do something creative writing Lee that is like cool that hasn't happened yet <laughs> but um I've been drawing in it I've been making not like grocery lists, but like bigger lists. Like I'm not bullet journaling in it, but there are some concepts that I'm taking from bullet journaling as like a archival kind of like, I don't know, doing a page about like my 10 favorite blah blah blahs or whatever. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Um, I've been using it kind of as a reading journal, but not like in any kind of reading journal-y sense. It's kind of the way I like to re do reading journals is... I'll show you on my reading journal pages. I'm a like an underliner or a highlighter. So when I go through a book, I really like to uh, underline the stuff, like quotes that I like from the book, things that I things that strike me in some way or another. Um, so what I've been doing is I've been going back and everything that I've underlined or highlighted, I've been writing in my journal for an entry for the book. Like for this one, I read a book called The Vanishing Half, and I just wrote down every single thing that I quoted from the book. And for this particular book, it went on for three pages, like a lot of pages, four pages. That's the last page. Um, and like I read another book called The House on the Cerulean Sea and I did the same thing, but there weren't that many quotes. So I also went through and like wrote down all the music that was in it. So I've got like a playlist for all the music that was in the book. These are all the quotes and then I've got like down here just like the list of the characters that were in it which I kind of like to do sometimes too and then I also bought this stupid little photo printer <laughs> called uh the it ivy canon ivy uh it's got an app and it just prints these like little two by three photo paper things <laughs> and they're stickers so I kind of been into like looking up fan art for books that I read and like I don't know I just this is Lucy right here 
and you know I've just kind of been using it in that way and now I want to show you all the different I'm not gonna do it because I'm just gonna tell you about all the books that I read and I'm not gonna do that here I want to do that in a separate video but maybe in that video I'll show you like every spread is what people call them every spread I did for every book that I read so that's been fun I've been doing that I've really been enjoying it I've really like gone overboard and it stopped now but there was a period of time where I bought I bought some new markers I bought some new pens I bought some new pencils uh, I bought a notebook I bought some washi tape because you buy stuff when you get into a new stupid hobby and that's just like how I bought a freaking photo printer I'm done buying stuff though it's like hobbies don't have to mean that kind of consumerism but it's really hard to not have it mean that Anyway, that's pretty much all I have. So my knitting has gone a little bit down down here to make room for all this like booky stuff, books and journaling and planning and all the things that go along with that stuff. So I think I will leave you there. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Um, if you've made it this far, tell me hi in the comments. Let me know. Tell me if you've found the squirrel throughout the video. I'd also love to know what you have been up to, uh, be it knitting or spinning a crochet or something entirely different. I would love to know what is kind of taking up your uh, happy mental space right now. What you've been doing with your free time, free time, because we all have a ton of that. All right. If you like the video, please do feel free to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. If you feel like supporting the channel, maybe check out my Patreon. Uh, there are certain tiers where you can get yarn sent to you and you will be entered into a giveaway prize. Okay, I will see you next time, whenever that may be. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Go read all the books and draw something, maybe write something, knit something, do, do what you gotta do, bake something plant something in your garden, water your house plants. I gotta water my house plants today. That is something I need to do, probably right now. Okay.